Good morning, my friends. Today is Thursday, April 7th. It is day 80 of Be Formed and day 37 of our spiritual spring training. Of course, today is opening day in baseball. I've got my Cubs hat on for the occasion. We are in McGaffey, New Mexico, which is on Oso Ridge outside of Gallup, New Mexico. Out for a walk, getting ready for the Camino that starts, uh, I'll be leaving next Tuesday. We're at about, about 7,000 feet, so I'm getting my lungs into shape for the Camino next week. What I'd like to talk about today is holiness. You know, as we approach Holy Week next week, the fundamentals that we're focusing on are becoming more complex. And so think about this in baseball terms. Um, what does holiness look like for an athlete, uh, for his sport? I think it's, it's being all in. It's being focused totally on what they are about. I'm a baseball player. It's living, eating, sleeping baseball. Holiness in the faith is making God the center of our lives. Literally, holiness means to be set apart, to be different than kind of everyone else. So with that in mind, let's look to holiness. Let's look at the readings. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 17. We have the story of Abram before he's named Abraham. And it says, Abram prostrated himself before God. So in humility, he worships God. And then God makes this covenant with him. And he says, I will render you exceedingly fertile. And we know that, you know, Abram did not have children yet at this time. I will maintain my covenant with you with an everlasting pact. So he makes this pact that is, you know, forever. God, God always promises his faithfulness, but throughout the Old Testament, we see people turning their backs on him. And when he makes this covenant, he changes his name from Abram to Abraham, uh, kind of this sign of new life. And uh, God says, I, I will be with you. We hear in the, the Psalm, the Lord remembers his covenant forever. So uh, Scott Hahn wrote a great book called God Keeps His Promises. It's talking about the covenants of the Old Testament uh, that God made. Um, and then ultimately, Jesus, we know, comes with the new and eternal covenant that we talk about at Mass. In the Gospel today, it's John chapter 8. Jesus says, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. Now think about this. You know, the, the people listening to this are saying, so you're really putting down Abraham, our father in faith, because he died. How can you say if we believe in you, we will never die? And of course, Jesus is speaking eternal life, that we're going to die a physical death. But he's saying, you know, you'll live with me forever. And they said Abraham died, as did the prophets. But you think about this. Do we know, uh, you know, was anyone in the Old Testament, do they make it to heaven? Think about the transfiguration. As Jesus is transfigured before uh, Peter, James, and John, you know, who are at his side but Moses and Elijah, which shows that Jesus is trying to show them what, uh, what heaven looks like. And so we know that Moses and Elijah are with him, that I'm sure that Abraham is there as well, and the great, uh, great prophets of the Old Testament. And so Je Jesus is saying, whoever keeps my word, whoever is obedient to my word. So that means that we need to be men and women of the word. We need to dive into the scriptures. We need to be all in. And then we need to put it into practice. You know, Jesus says, whoever hears my word and puts it into practice, it's like a house built on a solid foundation. But if we hear his word and, and don't do anything about it, our foundation is like the shifting sand and the winds will blow and the house will fall apart. And we see so many people today who kind of, you know, they kind of live their lives. You know, God is over there. You know, God does, is irrelevant in my life. I'm going to focus on my career. I'm going to focus on the things of this world. And uh, holiness is different than that. Holiness means that I'm going to make God the center of my life. I'm going to make God the center of my marriage, my family, my workplace. And uh, people should know that I'm a follower of Christ by the way I act, by the words that I speak. Even if they were able to read our thoughts, they would know that we're followers of Christ. And so Jesus goes on to say to Abraham, he says, I say to you, before Abraham came to be, I am. And of course, I am is the words that, that are the words that God spoke to Moses from the burning bush, meaning I'm God. And uh, a lot of people wanted to kill Jesus then. Jesus wasn't crucified for being uh, a good moral teacher. He was crucified for claiming to be God 
And of course, we know that he is, and he wants us to follow him with all that we have and all that we are. And so let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for the gift of your son, Jesus, uh, the word made flesh. Help us to grow in holiness, to become the men and women that you created us to be, to make Jesus the very center of our lives. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please continue to like, subscribe, and share these videos. Share this with one person today. And God bless you and play ball.